I hate generic platformers. And I'm not alone. Over the past few years, many different scratchers have made many different attempts to get rid of them, but none of those attempts worked. So in this video, I will take matters into my own hands and destroy all generic platformers once and for all. Now, you're probably wondering, Viper, how are you gonna do this? Well, I have a three-step plan that has the power to eliminate all generic platformers from the face of Scratch. But if even one thing goes wrong, this may not work. The first step in my plan was making a generic platformer. Although this may make no sense at first glance, I had good reason to do this. This generic platformer would act as the stepping stone for the next two parts in my master plan. You'll get what I mean later, but for now, let's just start working on the generic platformer. The process of making it was just as you would expect it to go, and not many big things happened. I just made some art, made some code, added in new features, made more code, and repeated that a few times. Here is the end result. I think it's safe to say that I accomplished my goal of making a generic platformer. Oh yeah. You may actually recognize this game from another video on my channel where I tried to go viral on Scratch in just 7 days. After I finished the generic platformer, I shared it and that also meant that I had officially finished part 1 of my plan. But in this game, there was something special that I did. In the notes and credits, I teased a part 2, and unsurprisingly, people wanted to see it. This caused a lot of hype and was really beneficial for the second step in my plan, which was creating part 2. And this sequel wasn't going to be any normal game that you see on Scratch. It was going to be a game that exposes generic platformers. Since part 1 was just a normal looking project, I knew that I would shock everyone with what I was about to create. But before we jump into coding, let me explain my vision for this game. So my idea was that the cube, who is usually the good guy, is the villain and you need to catch him by playing as the misunderstood final boss. The cube will be running away, so you will need to go fast and once you catch him, you will have successfully destroyed generic platformers. So yeah, to start, I reused the code from the first game. This code wasn't that impressive, it was basically just the player movement scripts and the cutscene code. The next thing that I added in was a new storyline. The storyline was just explaining how the cube is actually evil and how you need to catch him by playing as the final boss. However, I was kind of worried that players from the first game would find this plot twist too sudden and abrupt. But I just brushed that thought aside for the time being and continued working on the game. The next thing I added was crushable walls. I thought that this would be a good idea because, after all, the final boss was supposed to look big and strong. However, I noticed that the crushable walls looked a bit awkward at the moment, but I was lazy and told myself that I could fix them later. So in the meantime, I added in the runaway cube. This would give the game a feeling of rush and excitement. Initially, I had no idea how to implement this feature, but fortunately, thanks to another YouTuber, McTonk, this was all pretty simple. He made a video on his channel that really helped me with this, and this was honestly one of the best tutorials I've watched in a while. So using this tutorial, I coded in the running cube. I only actually did this for one level so far, and instead of doing more levels, I decided to first start fixing some things that had been bothering me since earlier, namely the sudden plot twist and the unnatural crushable walls. I worked on the plot twist first and ended up fixing it pretty quickly by just changing some wording and revising my storyline. Now, people wouldn't be as confused and things would just make more sense. With that out of the way, it was time to do something about the crushable walls. The way I solved the issue of them looking unnatural was by just deleting the walls altogether. This sounds kind of lazy, but honestly, they didn't really feel like they fit in the game anyways. With now having fixed both my problems, I knew what time it was. It was time to code the cube running away, but this time, for all of the levels. Even though McTonk's tutorial was really good, the process of making the cube move on the screen was pretty tedious and this was not very fun. But I knew there was nothing I could do about this, 
and that I just had to keep enduring the pain. After what felt like an eternity, I had finally finished and was ready to move on to making other parts of this game. At this point, I had already made quite a bit of progress and the game was starting to come together. So I only needed to add in a few other things. One of those things was the ending to the game. I don't want to spoil it for you just yet, so I'm not going to show it to you. Just use your imagination for now. The last thing that I did for this game was adding in a main menu. This main menu is pretty simple, it just has the name of the game and the play button. Nothing too fancy. And with that, I had finished the second step in my plan to destroy all generic platformers. Now all that is left is the third and final step in my plan. And that step is you. Without anyone else doing anything to stop generic platformers, my entire plan will flop. So it's you, the viewer, who needs to do something to help stop them. Let's destroy generic platformers together. But honestly, this probably won't work. Like I said at the start of this video, generic platformers have been around Scratch for a long time now and are showing no sign of leaving this platform. They'll probably always be on the trending page of Scratch, overpowering and outperforming original and high quality games. But I guess that's something out of our control. Until then, all we can do is wait and see. We'll see if my plan succeeded or if I was crazy to think that I could actually destroy generic platformers. But honestly, I had a really fun time trying to attempt such an enormous task. And maybe that's all that matters. Scratch is a place to have fun, and if you can do that much, you succeeded. Oh wait, I didn't show you the game yet. Well, let me show it to you. So yeah, that's the video. If you enjoyed it, click on this video where I tried going viral on Scratch in just 7 days. See you there.